I'm The Voice, and this is a Divi community-produced video from the foundation. So I talk a lot with Random String about that situation. One thing that's really interesting and makes him really the the man of the situation is his background is in algorithmic math. Yes. And he is really unbiased, but I would say he's a genius. Um, I think we will publish because he has a long text about his journey uh, from the first version of DV to today. And I think we'll publish that in the That'd blog so that you can, you can see his mindset. He's really th someone who thinks uh, long term, really careful about the security. Um, if there is 0.00001% chance of something, he would be like, hey, no, that's, that's no, not good. That's exactly, yeah. It was really interesting to to have random string at the at the head of all that because it really helped us. So first of all, he took the time to detangle everything because this is one of the big problem in all those blockchain. Everything is entangled together. And if you start to touch one thing, you're kind of worried of what will happen um, on some other things that are connected to it. So one of the first big work that he had to do is detangle things, separate them properly, uh, making sure that the code actually reflects the behavior that he's trying to achieve. And by doing that, he was able to highlight some piece of code that were already present in the blockchain and repurpose them or improve them towards some faster operation or completely different kind of operation. One of those things is the master node deployment on mobile. When uh, DV Labs came with the mobile wallet, they basically were requiring the master node deployment to go faster. So it required some improvement and the great work that Herman had achieved in that part of the blockchain enabled him to change the way it was deployed with a new approach and improve that deployment process in five seconds. It basically didn't need to wait. It has been a big change and we also implemented that in the desktop wallet and it, it basically improved completely the Speed. instead of having to wait 15 minutes for your master node to be ready now you could just leave it out after five seconds and it would deploy without problem exactly another of the the invention was the staking vote why, why don't you talk about staking vote voice sorry i had to swallow i was just drinking some iced tea um my apologies it's okay throw me under the bus um so staking vault staking vaults themselves being a cold technology it still stands firmly upon random string and it comes with a story and that story is about concern for your divi your cryptocurrency how he came about it is is a journey unto itself but it was all about him and he knew that people in the community were doing a process which is not necessarily safe um, it was where people were deploying, let's say, a remote VPS, and in that VPS, they were putting their coins on that VPS, uh, and that in that VPS, it was running, and it was hot, meaning its coins were in that um, remote server, and it was ha it's hackable. There's no question. It is, it is the dumbest thing that the industry ever helped promote was remote hosting, and then and then staking or, or mining the blocks on these remote servers where your coins and keys were all on it. He was thinking about that, but then he went on vacation. Uh, he left for a little while and he had a Raspberry Pi. I'm, I, I hope he doesn't get upset with me for telling the story, but he had a Raspberry Pi and he was concerned as he had the Raspberry Pi that if he's going on vacation or going away for the weekend, what if somebody got into my house? What if somebody what if somebody got my Raspberry Pi? Even though he was so concerned for security, even though he knew he had done all of his due diligence and that was probably impossible to happen, he still didn't have a good time on vacation because all he could think about was his Raspberry Pi. That in and of itself sent him on this journey after he cleaned up the masternodes codes and after he was you know, le listening and reading about different processes that were in crypto that were coming to be, that he realized that there was a way that he could build out vaults and vaults could be done in a cold process, meaning you could be on a Raspberry Pi, you could be on a remote server, like a masternode is set up. You can actually set up this process so it's totally safe and cold as a coin owner. And that's where the vaults sort of come into being. It was for that journey as himself 
as it's represented for community members and seeing community members putting themselves in unsafe positions, that's where vaults come into be. There's lots of fruit that comes from that, but vaults came into being just 100% for the safety and security that they were called. Yeah, it's, it's one of my favorite parts of Divi, in fact, um, because of the, the functionality. I know a couple of other uh blockchains have implemented something similar but yeah that, that's 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 true i think that there are other chains to do some sort of cold type of process like that the difference would be is the focus on the way he did it is he kept everything as far as the coin owner sovereignty in place you don't delegate anything you still own your vault your vault is still on your local machine it's through cryptography that's so that's a really complicated topic unto itself. It's through a little piece of code that allows this remote server to for actually the best way to say it is it's it allows you to supply that remote server with a little piece of code that allows that server to run as you mining blocks remotely. It's cold. It's really crazy how it works. It's very complicated. And anybody who wants to chat about it for an hour could set up a concierge with me but i can diagram it and detail it and walk you through it but it's crazy what he did so it's never a delegation never a delegation yeah and so uh, another result of of those improvement on the blockchain are the subscriptions yeah. and and basically also the direction to side chains so the subscription are still in beta they've not been integrated in the wallet but but it is a groundbreaking feature one of the things that's really interesting is Random String says that for improving the Masternode deployment and uh, developing the staking vault, he actually didn't need to do much. What he actually says is that once things were cleaned up, uh, it seemed extremely easy and obvious to do those changes. So it is very interesting. And in fact, it is one of the elements that puts the DV blockchain way ahead of much of the other projects. And of course, the technical aspect is definitely something that most of the people are less interested about, but it, it makes it a very good candidate to develop new things, to innovate on that blockchain because things are clear, things are very safe, they are very clearly identified. So it's a lot easier to build. Agree. Yeah, um, we're going to talk about sites. I think I think subscriptions are not appreciated. I have to say. <laughs> I think we so have to have an example that. of them, right? We have to have an example. People have to see yeah. subscriptions in action. Yeah, that's something that you and I have been promising for a long time. Is seeing something in action, and I know we've been busy it on is. many we different things. Cool. We just need to set aside some time to show a subscription. Even if even if I could set up some sort of a server to show how those subscriptions work. I know it's complicated. Our our yeah. goal is to through the community and through governance is to make that subscription process crypto made easy. But even if it's not easy right now, there's no reason why we can't show it in action and then give the idea of how easy it can be once we get it done. Um, that would be great. Yeah. The problem is the current iteration of the subscription is, is a lot more complex. I, I would say it's not a user facing feature. It's more a wallet developer feature. It needs it to is, be integrated yes. into wallets so that, so that user can actually, can actually use it and businesses can actually use it. It opens a huge realm of possibilities, uh, refounded purchase, some, you know, debit card for obviously limited to DV. It is a really interesting feature, but right now it's just, it doesn't get the love it should because it's basically not, not in the hands of the users, we can say. Exactly. I mean, for me, I mean, again, it's the thing I'm kind of focused on is this DAO, but like, honestly, a great use case for it is when a project is funded or whatever that it, it the funds go out as a subscription. It's not one big, not one big chunk, not a bunch of votes to make a ch another chunk go out. You just put it in a subscription, and you can always stop the subscription. It's, it's a perfect payment mechanism to in, integrate into the Dell later. It's, it's a super good use case in my head, but we need to get it actually in there. So I, I agree with you. We need to have demonstrating demonstrating treatable examples of it uh, going before it can be appreciated. But again, this is this is Divi, uh, as far as I know, Divi only, um, I, because it is not a custodial subscription. Every other subscription I see out there is really, 
the put a bunch of money somewhere and you know that somebody ends up owning and then that person will release the money yay it's a third per third party the, here the third party is the blockchain it's well anything that's different. on chain between two people is just between those two people it is not a smart contract that would be on an evm is between two people and whoever made the contract or the contract and so whenever I put my funds into something and say, I'm going to do it for this, even if it's in a DEX right now, if I'm going to do it for this, I'm giving over my coins to the DEX. Well, what does that mean? Well, what's the difference? I'm giving it over to, 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 to a, a Coinbase for that matter. There's somebody somehow in control of something of that smart contract. And, and I'm not going to debate the fact that you can change keys or you can burn keys. You can do all sorts of multi-party computation. The fact is, is that it's either centralized or it's decentralized. You can make it difficult. You can make it hard. You can make it obfuscated. You can do all sorts of things and then say it's decentralized. But really, decentralization of a subscription or a DEX has to be on-chain and it has to be out of the authority of anyone but the two parties involved. It doesn't mean that intermediate solutions, right, where trust minimized solution and all that are not are not great. They're great. But we do cherish at uh, DV, we do cherish the trustless and sovereign approach. We always have done. And for us, it is it is really important to be able to to bring those kind of features to to people who still want to remain sovereign with their funds.